You've got to tune to the Midday Show on listener-powered KEXP. You can find us at 90.3 FM in Seattle. We're streaming around the world at KEXP.org. And I am so happy to welcome our good friends from the Vales into the studio today. Thank you so much for coming. Hello. Thank you. Total Depravity, another fantastic album. You're going to play songs from that today? We are, yes, exclusively. Yes. Absolutely wonderful. Take it away.
in the KEXP studios with the veil sounding magnificent total depravity the new record loved those two songs thank you so much for coming in thank you I just have to say it has been such a pleasure to watch you really grow up in front of our eyes I remember like it was yesterday when you came in by yourself Finn in 2004 I believe this summer 2004 was it yeah and played songs from your first album the runaway found and you did that beautiful Tom Waits cover, but we still play that album all the time. And I want to say, I mean, you you were barely 20 years old then. On, uh, I mean, and when you must have written those songs so young and that album so strong. And I want to say that I've seen an evolution in your music, but every single record right through this brand new one, which I believe is your fifth full length, super strong, fully realized. So Really, in terms of evolution as an artist, the main thing I've seen is your confidence growing. You're such a strong performer now. But what's the journey been like for you? Because, like I said, right off the gates, barely out of your teens, such a strong record, then just bang, one right after another. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's been an odd uh, five albums, but uh, we've had a good time. I think when you start really young, like I was like 14, 15 when I wrote that first record. So you, it took a long time to feel not just like completely undeserving of any sort of um, attention whatsoever. That took about 
10 years to sort of feel like, oh, it's okay. I sort of, I feel like I vaguely know what I'm doing now. It felt, uh, but I don't know. It's still, maybe it's making peace with not really knowing what you're doing. And um, I think that's something that's changed, perhaps just sort of, um, yeah, feeling okay about um, the sort of chaos of it and uh, not knowing where you're going, really. You've known music all your life. It's been around you basically since you were born, but in your younger years, you didn't always see yourself becoming a musician, but do you just think that having that around you all the time um, had an impact on your ability to songwrite? I mean, you don't necessarily make music that is like your father's. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I just remember thinking musicians looked really sort of unwell, and um, why would you ever want to sort of do that with your your life and your body, it seemed like a perverse thing to do. And then you sort of hit adolescence and then it just seems like the only thing that would be worth doing. Um, and it was certainly the only thing I had any um, sort of aptitude for at all. So that, that made the decision easy. It's sort of all, I've, uh, all I got. So you've got to, got to work with that. Well, you're definitely an incredible storyteller. Well, you're you. such a narrative songwriter, and there's a lot of new characters in this record. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about what you love most about storytelling. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that's always been... Um, yeah, all my earliest sort of fondest memories are to do with stories, and we used to go on all these sort of weird things. My parents used to take me on these... Uh, they're called like spirit horse camps out in Wales and everyone sleep in teepees. And there was this Irish shaman called Shavam, Shavam O'Brien. And he used to stand over, he had this huge red beard, long red hair. And he'd sort of just tell these, these beautiful old stories. I remember thinking then really just like what a, what, a, what a thing to do. I loved, yeah, that guy was cool. And then so it sort of evolved out of that. And then it was like folk music it was sort of the first thing I listened to. I was like, you know, the stories, but with the sort of capability to make other stories with sort of sound around them. I don't know. They sort of evolved out of that. I don't know. They're just the, yeah, they've always um, been the, the most sort of enjoyment I've, I've derived from being around. It's been from stories. And then getting to make your own is just the coolest. Well, thing. speaking of sounds, which you just mentioned, let's talk about the new sounds on yeah. this record. Um, you've taken um, some new elements, and I know you um, worked with Adam, who you've worked with on other albums, but LP yes. was a collaborator on this record. I'm curious how that came about and what that added to the record. Yeah, well, that was just a great sort of accident, really. He wrote, he apparently wrote something on Twitter before we uh, really knew what that was. And so he, someone asked him who his favorite bands were, and that came up. So someone sort of told us about two years later that that had happened. And then we sort of randomly ran into him in Los Angeles and... Um, got on really well, and so it just seemed sort of silly not to try something. So the last song we're playing today, Axolotl, was the first song uh, we, we made after, like, after going out, and then the next morning we went into his friend Wilder's house and uh, recorded that. And it, we just liked where that was heading, so we, we made more, really. When you think of LP or Run the Jewels, you don't necessarily think of the veils no. immediately, but yeah. what a great marriage of sounds. Was it refreshing kind of to work with someone coming from a different musical, maybe not background, maybe your backgrounds are some of the same, but maybe using new, you know, tools? Yeah, it was great. It was just such a rare opportunity to be able to work with someone from quite a different yeah, genre of music, but that really liked what we did and was sort of keen to bring something new out of us, but not sort of just trample all over who we are as well, I suppose. So it was a rare sort of collaboration, really. And I mean, we do, we listen to a lot of the same sort of music. Uh, we just sort of come, came to it in different ways, I guess. Um, but like everything with this band, it seems to always stem out of friendship first, really. And then you sort of, you get that going and then other things uh, happen out of that. And again, I'm not surprised to hear you listen to some of the same things that I backtracked a little bit on that because you do hear different sounding bands and then you kind of find out often people do have, you know, very similar interests. Your interests mm. obviously go beyond maybe just the kind of music that you play. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, it's a beautiful new album, Total Depravity, and you and your band sound magnificent. I recognize a couple of these folks, longtime mm -hmm. friends, but can you introduce this fantastic sounding band? Oh, sure. Well, we have Ubi on, uh, on all these lovely keyboards. And uh, we have Steve here, who's filling in for our bass player, Sophia, who couldn't be here today. 
And we have Henning on drums, Dan on guitar, and uh, I'm Finn. Well, welcome. We've got the Veils live in studio here at KEXP. And how about more music? Yes, if you want more. Love guide me out of this ocean hateful Land of the damn just dance me to forever, to forever
Awesome. The Veils live in studio here at KEXP. Total Depravity, the new album. That track, Axolotl. Thank you all so much for coming in today. That was fantastic. You've got to tune to KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.